Hallelujah, people of God. Sons and daughters of the living God, shout hallelujah. Glory to the name of our King and our God. Glory to ancient of the days. Glory to our Prince and our King. Glory to the loving Father and Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Unto Him alone be all that glory. Thanksgiving. Praise is worship and might in Jesus' name. We give God all the praise and all the thanksgiving. All the honor, might. Amen. God bless you. I hope you people slept very well. For those of you us waking up, God bless you. It's a beautiful sun in the morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what a beautiful Sunday morning. What a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We've got to rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful Sunday morning. What a beautiful day the Lord has made. What a beautiful day ancient of the days has made. As far as there is life, there is hope for you. Hmm? Do you know what the challenge is? Oh, why me? Why are these challenges? Do you know why there are challenges? Challenges are there to produce results. To tell you that there is a solution. Are you hearing me? The challenges are there to show that immediately there will be a profile of solution. Solution will be profiled immediately. That is why there are those challenges around you. So how do you see challenges? I want you today to see challenges from a different perspective. See challenges as a stepping stone, not a hindrance stone, not a destructive stone. Begin to see challenges as a stepping stone. Look at it from another angle. Ah, listen up. Do you know the Bible says all things are working together? Let's use accusation for example. You've been accused. And the accusation looks so real. It looks so real. Maybe you've been accused. It looks so real, so believable. Do you know that whenever a woman accuses a man that he wants to rape her or sleep with her, do you know it looks so real? Then, can you see it from another aspect? It's true, there's a damage on your name when accusation comes. But... Look at it from another aspect. Number one, it is during such a critical time that you know your friends. The people who are not your friends will get off from you. The people who are not love, lovers of your soul will depart in the days of accusation. They will go away from you. They will be distant from you. They will either keep quiet or they join the spreaders of the rumors. Are you hearing me? Then, after that, God will bring you closer to himself. Because all the people I know that were wrongly accused, they don't have option. They get closer to God. They get closer to God. Then I was accused of bowing down and doing this and doing that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were accused. That was the time they get closer to God in their life. At the end of the day, what happened? They stood their ground and they became overcomers. They changed history. So don't think, the purpose of the devil and any agent the devil used to accuse you is to demoralize you, to weaken you, to put you off the rest, and then to make you nobody. But God will work out something tremendous, something beautiful, something glorious, something wonderful out of every accusation. Are you hearing me? So stop troubling yourself. Bible says, blessed are you when men shall reveal you and say all manner of evil against you. Have you, have, have you not seen lies being told against you? What you never affirmed, what you never imagined, said against you. Ha! You are not the first. Daniel was there, he was accused. Shazam, Meshach, and Abednego were accused. Jesus of Nazareth was accused. Stephen! It's not every people, God knows 
the different ways she wants to try and make you. But whichever way God chooses, to him be other glory. Some people, words hurt them. Therefore, God allow accusation. There are some, the trial time is waiting to be a children. There are some, ah, no matter what happened, their finances goes up, come down, until the appointed time of the Lord. He is God. He has the finance in our lives. He has what it takes to make you who you should be. Today we're looking on a topic that said, are you still looking unto Jesus? We've ministered the one that said look unto Jesus some time ago, but this one is a question. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Are you still looking unto Jesus? You know, it's a question. It's left for you to say yes or no. But the question is this, are you still looking unto Jesus? The instruction is that you look unto him. Let's see if, uh, uh, Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2. You're welcome. Azazel, you're welcome. Rita, you're welcome. All of me that I can see for now, you're welcome. From many parts of the world, from many countries of the world. Hmm... Looking unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. Mm, I love this scripture. I just love this scripture. It's a powerful instruction. Looking unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was sent before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The question is, are you, you, are you still looking unto Jesus? There are people that started with looking unto Jesus today, they have looked aside from Jesus. So there they are looking at left, west, and the others. But the Bible, the word of God is talking about Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. Do you know what it means? Look up. That's what it means. Look up. Do you know why this question comes? Are you still looking unto Jesus? It means, are you still with Jesus? In this chaos environment, in this changing, checking world, in this fast closing age, are you still looking unto Jesus? Or have you learned human imitations? A lot of things are happening. People have joined the world because they believe that if you can't beat them, join them. But why must we join them? Why must we be part of the world? Why must we be part of the devil? Why must we be now? Of all the faith you kept for long, of all your endeavor, of all your, you know, endurance, why must it be now? Why must it be now? Why must it be now? Are you usually looking unto Jesus? Are you taking a contrary decision? You took a decision to stand for Jesus and for Jesus alone. That time you got born again. You have great zeal for the Lord. You can sing. You can pray. You can evangelize. You have peace. You have joy. You have gladness. But what is happening right now? Looking, are you still looking unto Jesus? Many have looked away from Jesus. Somebody told me that any time she comes to Nigeria, that she will go to a higher, 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 higher place. For charms. I was looking at that. Were you not born again? These are people we've heard that are born again children of God. These are the people you see that cover from the head to the toe. You think that it is all in there. But look at what you are vomiting. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Are you still looking unto Jesus? In this environment, we are people are dressing naked. We are nakedness is the order of the day. Any lady that is not naked have not started. That's what the environment of now says. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Are you still looking unto the man of war? 
Does it mean? Do, do you know what it means? Looking unto Jesus means, are you still waiting for Jesus' example? Are you still saying, I believe in him? Are you still saying, I ride down with him? Are you still saying, he is my king, my God, my Lord? Are you still saying, he is my everything? Are you still saying, no matter what happened, even if the world is falling down and breaking, I am for Jesus? I can you still say like three Hebrew boys, Jesus the author and finisher of your faith. Looking unto him. That means living, looking at the living example of Jesus. Believe in Jesus of Nazareth for everything. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Are you still looking unto Jesus? Have you changed? Have you seen the fashion of the world? Are you changing with the ch changing time? Are you changing with situation? A lot of things are happening. A lot of things are happening. Some people are not looking at their age mates. Some people are not looking at their friends. Some people now are looking at their associates. Some people now are looking at their friends. Some people are not looking at one thing or the other. Men of God, majority of us are no more looking unto Jesus. We are not looking at the latest fashion of the day. What kind of dress am I going to wear? Ah, if you see what that man of God is wearing, that is what I'm going to wear. I will show this, I will show this. A lot of us are so in traditional wear, so-called clergy or cassettes. Ah, I will wear this, I will wear this. Is that where the anointing lies? Is that where the anointing lies? Somebody said no. Somebody went to the bishop. Daddy, if you don't allow these girls to paint, if you don't allow these girls to wear nika to the church, if you don't allow these ladies to wear tight, you know, the dress that ties them up, if you don't allow these ladies to paint their mouth, wear whatever thing they like, wear with one of the latest that, Daddy, they are going to leave the church. Oh. They are going to leave the church. They will run away. If you don't allow them to dress like Jezebel, let them be Jezebel in appearance. Daddy, let them be angels. Let them be angels in heart. Is it possible? Can you be angel in the heart and Jezebel outside? Is it possible? It's not now. It's not now. It's not possible. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Looking unto Jesus, the mighty man of God. Looking unto Jesus, are you still looking unto him? In a situation where people are telling lies to survive, do you still look unto Jesus or do you join them in lying? In a situation where men of God are arranging miracles, hey, this man has been crippled. They bought a wheelchair. I say he walk in a wheelchair. He walk out of wheelchair and people clap and donation is given to them. Finances is given to them. Who amount of money is given to them? Are you still looking unto Jesus? In the situation where people are sucking their wife, marrying another one, divorcing and remarrying, and the first wife is alive, and they marry the second one, and they marry the third one, and they keep marrying, do you still look unto Jesus? In the situation we are giving bribe has nothing to do with faith anymore. Uh -huh. Give him bribe now so that he's going to give it to you. Uh -huh. In a situation, we are born again. We are children of God. We go to school and sort for their children. The result is so bad. They go to lecturer. Is it no money is going to take? Is it not this and that? And they sort it out. Born again, children of God. Do you still look unto Jesus? In a situation where people can tell any manner of life to get a resident permit, to get a green card of a nation, are you still looking unto Jesus? In a situation where people born again can enter any kind of business, any drug business, any kind of business, do you still look unto Jesus? In a situation where men of God are involved in ritualistic things and time as rituals, not even time as rituals, some are caught with human part, some are caught in the are doing one thing or the other, do you still look unto Jesus? 
In a situation where the people you trusted so much, so much in faith you believe, are now causing havoc, are causing shame, disgrace to Christianity. Do you still look unto Jesus? There are a lot of reasons why you shouldn't look unto man. For course, look unto Jesus. Look at the perfect example of Jesus. He remained in Jesus. Your husband was the one that converted you to faith, or your wife was the one that converted you to faith, but today your husband is misbehaving, or your wife is misbehaving. You can't believe what is happening around. You begin to say, is that what Christianity is all about? Do you still look unto Jesus? When the environment around about you have changed, when evil is the order of the day, when people are proud of sin, especially born again, are proud of sin, talking about sin, well, today, we are born again. I begin to hear girls. That's, that's my girl boyfriend. How can you be a born again child of God? And an unbeliever is keeping a boyfriend. And you say you're keeping a boyfriend. Do you still look unto Jesus? Where everybody around about your environment is keeping a boyfriend. Is keeping a, where men are keeping girlfriend. And where boys are keeping girlfriend. And where girls are keeping boyfriend. Do you still look unto Jesus? A man will mess you up before you get married. A woman will mess you, you mess a woman up before you go for your real wife. Do you still look unto Jesus? Can't you be an exception here on earth? Can't you be a different child of God? Can't you be a child of God with difference? Can't you be a child of God with honor? Can't you be a child of God with dignity? Can't you say, I distinguish myself? Shadrach distinguished himself. Meshach distinguished himself. Abraham distinguished himself, Lot distinguished himself, Daniel distinguished himself, all the people that lived live before him, they distinguished themselves. They refused to walk in the idolatry of their generation. God called Abraham, I saw you different, or you leave this land, go to the land where I'm going to start with you, I will do wonders, I will do great things. Do you still look unto Jesus? The Bible, the word of God said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was before that, that was said before him endured the cross. Can you, because of eternity, can you, because of heaven, endure everything? Can you, because of the joy you're going to receive, enjoy it? Look at what's happening here. The people that get into courtism. Sometimes they bring three things and ask you to choose two. They ask you to take long life, children, and wealth. If the person pick long life and children, the person will not have wealth. If the person pick children and wealth, the person will not live long life. If the person pick long life and wealth, the person will not have children. Ha! You choose two out of one. Ah, you choose two out of three. You say, the devil. Can you look unto Jesus? You see how the devil is deceiving himself and deceiving people. He, he has been, he is continually deceiving people. He deceived the demons and the demons are deceiving people. Can you look unto Jesus today? Can you say despite whatever then, no matter the level of fornication, no matter the level of corruption in the society, no, no matter the level of lies among men of God, no matter the level of what is said, I will stand for Jesus of Nazareth. I will stand for the Master. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Are you still looking at him is the question. Just to remind you who you are. Just to remind you that the record is still going on. Just to remind you that God is still alive. Just still reminding you that your life is in a record. Just still to remind you that whatever thing you are saying is being recorded. Don't join them. I'm pleading with you. So many of you have given God time. Let me tell you. Don't be preoccupied by marriage. I want to get married. I want to get married. It's not in your hands to get worried about marriage. Look unto Jesus. Many ladies born again that fell, I am 32, I am 40, I am 45, I am going to this. You didn't start as a Christian or you should have known that. You didn't start from the 1, 18, 19, 20 as a born again child of God. It was in your late 30s, in your late 40s that you come in. Are you hearing me? You came in and you're hurrying God. 
Do you still look unto Jesus? In a situation where telling of lies, where drunkenness doesn't matter anymore. In a situation where a married woman can easily go out and commit immorality and come back and seek cook for the husband and do as if nothing happened. Do you still look unto Jesus? In a situation where you are time prim primitive, where you are time analog, where you are time ad adapted, when you don't get into sin, when you don't get into unrighteousness, do you still look unto Jesus? The question is that do you still look unto Jesus? In a generation where women are dressing today and making their breasts no more a private part, but it become a public part, do you still look unto Jesus? Child of God, do you still look unto him? In a crooked generation, where men and many people have failed Jesus of Nazareth, do you still look unto him? Can God count on you? Does, does the remnant stay? Is there? Is the remnant stay there? Jesus of Nazareth is your standard. Jesus of Nazareth is your standard. Anything short of that is outside the glory of God. Anything short of that is outside the will of God. Jesus of Nazareth is your standard. Child of God. Looking unto Jesus. In the book of John chapter 13, verse 13. John, Gospel of John chapter 13 from verse 13. You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for, uh, you say, well, you say, well, for so I am. You call me master, and you call me Lord. Well, that is who I am. If then your Lord and master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. If I have washed your feet, if I, your Lord, if I, your maker, if I, your savior, have washed your feet, do so to others. If I could be humble, Go and be humble. If I could stand my ground, if I could, for any reason, stand, go and stand too. John chapter 13, verse 13 and 14. John chapter 13, verse 13 and 14. You call me Lord, you call me Savior, that's who I am exactly. But I want to tell you something. I want you to know something. That I... That is your Lord. Ah, that is your Savior. Ah, that is everything you can think of. If I am what you are saying, if I am what you are calling me to be, then, and I've done all these things for you, then you ought to do it for brethren. Are you still looking unto Jesus? How you will know if you are still looking unto Jesus is what you said. Can Jesus say it? When people provoke you, when you are provoked, when you are annoyed, the word, the word you vomit, can people vomit it? The word you speak, can people speak it? The word you say, can people say them? Hmm? What you vomit when you're provoked? What you vomit when you're annoyed? Can, can Jesus say it? That's one of the ways to know if you're still walking with the Lord Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. I used to look unto him. So many people say, I've looked for him. My neck is bending me. I want to look up. Looking up is death. Destruction. Continue looking. Something good will come out of it. Looking unto Jesus. In, this, in such a destructive situation, in an environment we are saying it's no more a big deal, where people get into committing sin anyhow, you look unto Jesus. He is the only one that can transform you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in Hebrew, uh, uh, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Are you still looking unto Jesus? Where people are paying bribe to get a job. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Do you still look unto Jesus? Present your body holy and acceptable. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. It is only him that can renew you. It is only from there life can come. Look unto Jesus. Are you still looking unto him? 
Do you know that people don't call sin sin anymore? A young lady can approach you for sex without being ashamed, even as a man of God. I drove with my wife somewhere. Uh, my wife was going to their school. I chose to drop her. I dropped her. And then she went. Uh, you know, he's a teacher. They had some meeting. I just dropped her. And uh, a lady walked up to me. I used to know her. She came to me. I greeted her, fleshly smiling. But she was not smiling. She was heavy. She started telling me the problem between her and the husband, how severe the problem have been, how the problem have been this, and I said, ah, is that so? I didn't know it has gotten to this level. She said, yes. Do you know at the end, do you know what she concluded? She concluded and said, you are the one that made me to be in this soup I am. You are the one that made me to be crying and suffering all this thing. Since the sorrow I'm passing through is okay for you, there's no problem. Don't pity me. I said, how? How can I be, uh, enjoy your sorrow? How can I enjoy your pain? No. You know I've been praying for you. He said, forget prayers. Do you still look unto Jesus when people can no more wait in prayers? When people have alternative way of doing their things? Do you still look unto Jesus? Hmm. I was asking her, I don't understand. She said, well, you are the one that is causing these pains. Have you even forgotten what transpired in the past? She told me, do I remember some years ago that she came to me? The husband is matriching her because she has no child. Now, do I remember some years ago when she came to me and pleaded with me? On that year, actually she came. She was crying and crying. I said, stop crying. God is the giver of children. Do you see why God doesn't answer the prayer of a lot of people because they have a different motive in their heart? She cried. While she was crying, I spoke to her. I said, relax your mind. Something good will come. There is this God that is God of 11th hour. You are still young. You can have your children. I will encourage her. Do you know, she boldly spoke to me and said, can you help me out? Can you help me? I said, you know, I can do anything for you. To make you happy and also to make sure you stand for God. And to make sure God blesses you with children. Children are a heritage of the Lord. She looked unto me and said, I know my relation is very high time. What you can do to help me is, whenever I feel my relation period, I'll come to you. I'll have sex with you. So that I'll be pregnant and this young will go. I've discovered that the whole, my old man is not a man enough to pregnant me. I said, what did you just say? He said, that's what... Ah, before I could start rebuking, she started crying. I said, your tears cannot move me. Oh. No, 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 no. You can leave, please. Is that why you came? Who told you this? I said, do you ever remember... That your mind has been deceived by the day. He said, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Are women not doing that? It's just to come out of their sorrow. It's to come out of it. If you're a woman and you have done that, or you're still doing that, or you're advising somebody to do that, it's just a momentary. It's, a, it's just a momentary escape. Just few bam, bam, escape. The punishment, the sorrow, the pains of it is coming. Higher than what you expected. What a great deceit. Hmm. So I told her it's not possible. Don't ever do that. If, even if you have told another man of God, I don't, he said, no, I cannot tell another man. Is you that I love? I said, you don't love me. If you really do, you'd have cared for my soul. Do you still look unto Jesus in such an environment where a woman will be the one to come to toast you, to plead with you, and to beg you to sleep with her? So she told me that day, that was years. It has happened years. She not told me that day. If you have agreed, would I have said sleeping in this sorrow? Hey, that is transferring of sorrow. And I spoke in my heart, I said. I think I, if I didn't speak in my heart, I told her. That would have been a transfer of sorrow. Your sorrow would have been transferred to me. Because I will have no peace. I will have no rest. We have to go to restitution in my, to my wife and to your husband. And you know the shame and disgrace is going to cause. She said, well, you are still sounding like that. I said, extraordinarily sounding. I think that should be the last we saw. She left.
and never came back. After some time, I was told she has left the husband's house and went and married a native doctor. The husband went and married another lady. She become annoyed. Watch with the husband, marry another lady. Instead of her to remain and still believe God, she left the husband's place and went and married as a third wife. It to a native doctor. The native doctor was laughing and telling people that somebody that will train the children born here has come. That somebody is going to train all these children. The, the, the person has come. Mm. Mm. This lady used to be born again. She was brought up in the house of the Lord. Some time ago, somebody called me. I, we didn't meet again. Because we were not in agreement. After some time, somebody told me that she has died. She has gone. She has gone. Don't be anxious of distance. What God is delaying to give to you, don't take it fastly when the devil gives that to you. I was later told she had the baby girl. She had the baby girl. And today the baby girl is no more. The child is that made her to lose her salvation. She is not seeing the child anymore. She has gone to meet her maker. She has gone to life beyond. So whenever you want to commit a sin, it is momentary. The enjoyment of sin is momentary. Drunkenness, it is momentary. Fornication, it is momentary. All these things, they are momentary. They are just for a while. After that, the person faces the reality. The pains. The person faces his maker. The agony. That is why you should keep on renewing yourself, examining yourself day in, day out. To know. Bible said, be not conformed to this world. It's only when you look unto Jesus that you become transformed. Are you hearing me? In the environment where you are the only Christian around, do you know it has been happening? I was talking to one lady where she's living in Europe. She told me in the whole vicinity, she's only born again child of God around the whole vicinity. And while she look unto Jesus, people look unto her. She says sometimes when she dresses, people call her, I love your dressing. The way she covers herself, I love your dressing. People call her, I love your hairdo. People call her because she maintains a very natural hairstyle. Sometimes people call her, the way you're moving alone, I like it. Yes, she's moving alone, but she's not alone. Instead of you to keep this friend, unbelieving friend, this and that, tomorrow you call one story, talk the other story, one gossip or the other gossip, and before you understand it, you become involved, it's better to walk alone. May the mighty hand of grace help you. May the mighty hand of grace help me. So that we're in such a situation, in an environment like that, the mighty hand of God will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that, we're going to be who God wants us, want us to be. And the name of Christ alone shall be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Are you still looking unto him? Or have you changed your mind? <laughs> Somebody was praying and I was asking God this and this and that and that and that. And let her tell God, you can forget it. I have changed my mind. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5. 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 The, the, the just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning do it you bring a judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I used to look on to him. He said, the Lord, our mighty king, the everlasting father, the just Lord, Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He's in the midst of your life. He's in the midst of the whole world. He's in the midst. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. God will not do iniquity. You are a child of God. You are not supposed to do iniquity. God will not do iniquity. God will not commit sin. In the midst of check, he said, God will not do sin. Therefore, he cannot count a sin as a righteous person. God does not commit sin. God will not commit sin. God does not do sin. Are you hearing it now? He doesn't do that. He doesn't commit that. He wants you to be his son. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Can you look unto Jesus today? Can you believe Jesus today? Can you believe the mighty man of our Lord today? Can you believe the rock of ages today? Can you believe the ancient of the days today? Looking unto Jesus. 
daughter and finisher of her faith. The just, the just Lord is the finisher of the three verse one. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning, do it he bring judgment to light. If he continue exposing the wrong, he continue exposing judgment. He continue exposing, he bring it to light. He faileth not, but unjust, knoweth no shame. The devil, they come and say, how can a woman approach a man for immorality? <sighs> We've seen a lot of things, so. We've seen a lot of things, so. One small girl got married. She was not getting pregnant. Because of the way we pet her when she comes to the office. We pray for her. We, we advise her, encourage her. Sometimes you come with a heavy heart, broken heart, and the way we talk to her. After some time, you can tell somebody, still talk to my sister. She needed God comfort. Because the way we handled her. One day she visited and told me she came for a reason. That she discovered her husband is not a man. I said, wow. Is that so? How do you know? So they went for test. The spam is equal to nothing. I said, let me tell you. Each ejaculation of a man is between 40 million to one to 100 million, sometimes 150 million, sometimes higher. I said, look, let me tell you. Uh, even if they say it's 12 million, you don't need the 12 million to take it. God can still do a miracle. Fix your heart on God. Stop wasting your time on the lab and the results. Sometimes they make a lot of mistakes. A woman came to my office. I prayed for her. After praying for her, the Lord spoke to me that I have blessed the woman that is pregnant. I told the woman, I said, the Lord said you're pregnant. The woman was excited. The woman was glad. She jumped up and waited for one week, two weeks, three weeks. A month there about. And she went to hospital for tests. They told her it's not possible. Nah, you are not pregnant or anything. The woman came to my office with the result. I looked at the lab result. I looked and said, Daddy, I believe you more than this report in my hands. So. I believe you because your word is forever settled in heaven. Daddy, please, help me out. You said this woman is pregnant, but love and the word is proving that she's not pregnant. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I said she's pregnant. I'm the one that planted the baby. The Lord insisted. And when God is insisting and love is insisting, I told her to go back. Go and tell them that the man of God said that you're pregnant. Looking unto Jesus. Not looking unto love. Not looking unto reports. She went back. Are you still looking unto Jesus? In those days when people still have faith. In those days when people still believe in impossibility, that all things are possible. You can believe it now. Are you still looking unto Jesus? The woman went back. And the madame, the matron there looked and said, what happened? He said, I'm pregnant. So how do you know? Well, I think the result, you're not pregnant, is negative. She told them and said, the man of God said, the God is sad, said that she's pregnant. They laughed and saw this man of God and their prophetic utterance. Okay. What do you want us to do? The woman said, the man of God said, you should redo the test. They, I told the woman, even if it takes you doing it 10 times, please do and go to different labs. You are pregnant. The woman went. And they did it. Eventually they said, ah! Now, wow, we're very sorry about that. You are pregnant. We're very, very sorry. Who did this test before? Now, how she become pregnant? Looking unto Jesus. Daughter, I'm finished out of it. Looking unto Jesus. So the lady came. The first one I was talking about. She came crying one day. I said, I told you to stop crying. I told you that crying is a sign of defeat. I said, when you are praying to the Lord with burden, you cry. But when you are crying over a situation, it's a sign that you are helpless. She believed. She later came down, bent down, came closer to me, sat down, and bent down and was pinching her leg, doing this. I said, what is it, feel free? You know, devil. She's not free to say it. 
She said, she told her husband that she can go and meet any man. And uh, since the husband cannot perform, that the husband told her there's no problem. I said, who do you want to meet? He said, you. I said, God forbid. You mean you're not afraid? So even if I, the man of God, will come down to your level, then you mean you can condescend? He said, yes, now that's why I care. He said, it's a pity. It's not possible. Ha, ha, what has come over you? You know why a lot of people accuse men of God? They will approach them for sex. They will tell them how much they love them. When the man of God, if he is not so experienced, he must call the person and shout. The lady will go. Want to disgrace the lady, the lady will go out and carry a story. And the world will believe it's true. It's true. Hey, hey, hey. Not knowing. The man of God has not gotten experience. Those of us that have gotten some experience, when a lady come and tell you that, it's Quietly speak on her, quietly dismiss her to go. Looking unto Jesus. Just to look unto Jesus when a lot of miracle workers will sleep with a girl before they go and perform a miracle. One of my daughters came. You know, she was coming closer, coming closer, coming closer, coming closer. I didn't know why she was coming closer. A married woman. She was coming closer, coming closer, coming closer, wanting to know more about us, about the ministry. One day, she made some advancement. I told her, why I do this? She said, but men of God like you have been doing that. I said, are you not married? He said, what about it? I said, what a generation are we in? Ha! Ah! She started telling me her stories. Ha! Ah! I said, men of God? Married? He said, yes, now. And he felt we are the same. I rebuked her. She left. Then after some time, she called me and said, my mentor, my one and only mentor, my spiritual father. I said, okay, assuming that I went into nonsense with you, that the world did think that would have happened. Would you see her believe me as a man of God? Let's look unto Jesus. You are a married woman. You, are you surprised that your husband friend has been advancing on you? You are a born again child of God. Despite the way you dress and cover Somebody's still dying. No, don't do that. Because you are a man, or you are a child of God. The way you walk in the office, somebody's admiring you. Somebody, a lady is too close, wanting to come nearer. Don't give them that chance. Remember what happened to Samson. Maybe you're walking in a place where they are giving account. You can take money or do anything with money under your custody. Nobody knows, but don't do that. Are you hearing me? Maintain a standard. A day will come when it will be your turn to be favored. A day will come when it shall be your turn to be blessed. And surely you'll be blessed of the Lord. Surely you'll be favored of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Look unto Jesus. Are you still looking unto him? So many people have said, Daddy, we're not more praying. I said, ah, why? One pastor told me, Daddy, I can't continue praying. I said, why? Why do you make such a statement? He said, Daddy, um... Mm. Each time I pray, people will not turn up to the church. Uh, each time I pray and fast, people will not come. But any day I don't pray, that week I don't pray, that month I don't pray, come and see people trooping. I said, stop that. I said, stop that. Jesus started with prayer and they with prayer. When you are praying and people are not coming, it means that you have not gotten breakthrough in your prayers. Pray more. There are powers of darkness that I want to set you back. One of my daughters went to renew her papers in that country where she is. Wow. The person in charge who just put the stamp was so much interested in her. It's a black beauty. Child, I so much love this lady. I fell in love with you. They told her, he's a Nigerian who, as a husband, they said, oh, it, does it matter? And the lady said she was looking. Smiling, just let the man put this. That the man says he's not going to do that. He will he never do until he sleeps with the lady. The man boldly told the lady that. I will not do that until you allow me to sleep with you. What a beauty I'm seeing in you. The lady said, No. The lady have to send somebody that sends somebody that sends somebody. The thing still came to the table of the man. Somebody have to charge the lady and say, I'm going to charge you. If you want it to be done, I'll do it through, through my process, but it will still, still get to that table. She said, I prefer to pay. 
She paid. Eventually it was stamped. What evil are you planning to do? Look unto Jesus. They told you, bring so 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 money in the village. They are doing this, they are doing this. And they are doing something for you. And you are in the town, born again. And in the village, you are worshipping the devil. That demon will visit you again and your children. Until you denounce them. And tell them, off your life. Looking unto Jesus. Don't and finish out of your faith. Do you still look unto him? Are you still looking unto Jesus? Can you still boldly say, Behold one manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Are you still saying that? Can you boldly say, Lord Jesus, you are my everything. Can you boldly say that? Can you boldly say, I will serve you in the morning, in the afternoon, and all the days of my life. Can you boldly say that? <sighs> Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Can you look unto him? Look at the love the Father has bestowed on you. The Bible, the Bible said in the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's an overcomer in you. There's an ability in you. There is a great strength in that weakness in your life. Why do you easily fall into this sin? There's one your brother like that. Every time he will come to me and say, Daddy, I've done it again. You are married. Why do you fall into fornication, every immorality? Say, you are sin. You come back against that day, I don't know, I've done it. Ah, why you? You follow bad friends. That his friend told them, let them go out. They went out. You didn't know when they was tempted into doing that. Each of them pick a lady and they went to challenge with the lady you did. You have a wife. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you destroying yourself? Why are you defiling yourself? These people, you have gone to sleep with a lady with them. Can you tell them the gospel again? Can you, do they know you are born again? Why are you crucifying Jesus? Why are you doing all this nonsense? Do you still look unto Jesus? You are looking unto your friends. They can drink. You are still drinking. And you say you are born again. You don't know that alcoholic company is the only company that is a shame of their customers. They're the only people that's ashamed of their customers. Have you seen them advertising with their customers before? They go and look for sin. Real people, they advertise with them. But their customer who has fallen and fallen into the gutter, who has drank and go home and begin to fight the family, they will not advertise with those ones. They are ashamed of their customers. They know that their end product is so destructive. What is your end product like? Is it destructive? You hide to commit a sin. But you can't hide to do righteousness. Sin is done in darkness. Righteousness is done in the light. Child of God. Do you still look unto Jesus? When people around you are telling you the way of making money. When boys are no more interested. When boy degeneration is so lazy. They are into Yahoo Yahoo. They are into, you know, duping people, making money. Even in the church. One of them called me. Hey, man of God. Your line is not moving. Your line is this and that, 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 that. Your internet, whatever. Your Facebook, this. I'm going to look for this for you. I will be an, I'm an expert. I will help you. I will do this. I will do that for you. I said, are you sure? He told me the name of the church is worshipping. Told me the name of his pastor, who I know very well to be a man of God. I want him. So many things he told me. I said, okay. You're a seed of God. He said, yes, sir. Ah, I was quoting scriptures for me. Told me how his involvement in the church. I said, let me give you a trial. Just a tip of trial. He told me, no, daddy. Why not do it with this? I said, you don't command me. Let me give you a little trial. I gave him a little trial. I said, I'll start off. Let's see what will happen. I dropped in a little money. Just truly not addressed. That was his entry today. But he's in the church. He's one again. The interrogation I made. The deep questions are proved that he is a child of God. A child of God, I mean. A Christian or a church goer. But today, what has happened? We are 100 people are in the church, but two, three, four people are people that are making no wonder the Bible says. Many are called, 
but few are chosen. Are you among the many or are you among the few? Among the many or among the few? That is why the question came up. Do you still belong with them? You may have missed somebody five, ten years ago. Being a Christian today, it might not be one anymore. There's a lady I used to know. She was vibrant in the Lord, standing in the Lord. When I met her last, she was telling me she belongs to Ikaka. She told me she don't know Ikaka and religion and Christianity, just the same thing. Jesus, I said, stop that. Is that where you have gone? Is that where you have found yourself? He said, yes, sir. That's where he is. I said, God, show you me. That man you used to know is still, still a Christian. You know him years ago. You know her years ago. Verify if he's still standing. He must have changed his mind. He must have adopted a lot of things. Let's look unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. And this God will be glorified forever. To him alone be under glory in Jesus' name. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Your faith must be try, but don't fail. Look unto him. In time of no house rent, look unto him. In time of no job, look unto him. In time your husband is sick, your wife is sick, look unto him. In time that is shaking around about you, look unto him. In time you are living in pains and trouble, look unto him. In time that things are not working out, look unto him. In time your people are asking you, bring money. We are going to for juju or this thing, or we have brought the money. Just give us consent. Let's go with your name to try and look unto Jesus. Don't allow that to happen. Look unto Jesus. You have a testimony. In time, persecution is so hard. Look unto Jesus. It's like all the witches are after you, all the demons are after you. Look unto Jesus. Whenever you remove your eye from Jesus, you begin to see pain. You begin to see trouble. You begin to see problem. Peter was looking unto Jesus, walking on top of the sea. The moment Peter removed his eyes, what happened? Problem started. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. May the name of Christ be glorified. Hmm. May the name of Christ be magnified. Worship on other Lord. For unto the Lord be under glory forevermore in Jesus' name. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Shall we pray? Father, we give you praise and thank you. I love you your name. As we talk about looking unto you, Jesus. Child of God, have you removed your eyes from Jesus? Can you begin to tell God, in any way I have removed my eyes from you? I'm just sorry. I want to refix my eyes. I want to be focused on you again. I want to look unto you again. I want to see you again. Daddy, I want to look unto you. Tell the King of kings, God of God, and the mighty man of Allah that you want to look unto him. Now and forevermore you want to look unto him. You don't want to look unto that man. You don't want to look unto that woman. You don't want to look unto that boy. You don't want to look unto that girl. You want to look unto Jesus. You don't want to look on your director, on that business enterprises. You want to look unto Jesus. Mashara makuda bonashe robro hunda santa. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Daddy. Hallowed be your name. You are worthy, you are great, you are real, you are kind. Be that glorified and praised and let that glory be above all the earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty man in battle. Thank you, Elohim and Leon. Can you continue praying? Tell him, Lord, I want, I'm sorry. I want to look unto you. Anything that have distracted me, anything that have distracted me, I'm sorry about it. Tell him, I'm sorry. I want to refocus on you again. Help me to see you. Not this sinful word. Not this adulterous word. Not this word that is full of stealing, full of lie, full of hatred, full of atrocities, full of immorality, full of nakedness, full of destruction. Let me look unto you, Lord. Help me to look unto you, Jesus of Nazareth, daughter and finisher of my faith. Mashara, Makudadada. The mighty hand of grace be upon us, upon you and upon me. And let Christ's name alone be honored. For unto him be other glory forevermore in Jesus' name. If you want to look unto Jesus, you must first of all be born again. You must be born again before you look unto him. So that an entrance will be granted you so that you can look unto him. If you really want to give your life to Christ now, 
want to look unto Jesus, daughter and finisher of your faith, can you serve me? Can you say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I mention your name. I want to tell you that I love you. Forgive me all my sins. Give me grace to be your child. From this moment onwards, O oh Lord, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Show me mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the mighty hand of grace come your way. Let the elevated power of grace come your way. Let Jesus of Nazareth be your King and God and Lord. Be your preservation and be your protection. Let Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk into you. Life. And protect and preserve you. And save your soul. From this moment, your soul is saved. May God give you grace to serve him in purity and holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. May the mighty hand of God be upon you. You that is already born again. I refocus your attention to Jesus. Your faith that is dwindling, shaking. I restore your faith back to Jesus. The confidence back to Jesus. The sin, that sin you committed that drove you away from God, may the Lord forgive you. Heal your mind that heal the wound in your heart and bring you back to himself again in the name of Jesus. Father, that man that is sick that is looking on to heal him, that woman that is sick looking on to heal her, that person that has financial constraint looking on to you, provide for him, provide for her in the name of Jesus. From today, that woman that is depending on you and want to have children, open her womb to have children. In the mighty name of Jesus. That family that is, that married that is shaking, heal the marriage. Let the marriage not fall. Any fumbling of the devil, let it not work out. Let the glory of God comfort and let Christ's name be honored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, for all you've done. Hallowed be your divine and mighty name. Be that glorified and magnified and let that glory be above all the earth. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. It is well with you. Peace of God upon you in the name of Jesus. The remaining days of this month, your blessed and favor. God's goodness and hand be upon you and his mercy and miracle. I bless your new week. Let it be a beautiful week. A glorious week for you. A week of goodness. A week. November is ending and September is starting. Uh, December is starting. A week. November is ending and December is starting. God will bless you. From the old, you get to the new. In the name of Jesus. And there will be new things that will happen in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Always remember, look unto Jesus. Don't look on situations. Don't look at the way people are doing it. Look at what Jesus said about it. And you'll be on top. You're blessed and so far.